This is the 51st video supplement for CIS 351, Grand Valley State University's course on computer organization and assembly language. This video discusses the LRU and pseudo LRU cache replacement policies. The previous video listed and briefly discussed a number of cache replacement policies and then mentioned that of all of these, LRU, or least recently used, is the most popular. LRU is the replacement policy that evicts the cache block that has gone the longest without being accessed. For example, given this sequence of accesses, LRU would evict variable C because we have to look the furthest back in our history to find the most recent access to C. Let's begin by discussing why LRU is so popular. Let's first think about what makes it so effective. To understand why LRU does such a good job, we first need to understand what the optimal strategy looks like. If you were omniscient, how would you decide which block to evict? Well, the optimal strategy is to replace whichever block won't be requested again for the longest amount of time. Right? The longer you go before you have to bring the data back in, the better your performance is. But we can't actually implement this strategy because it requires knowing the future. The replacement policy of any real cache is just an approximation of this optimum. So it turns out that when you consider a wide variety of programs, LRU actually does a really good job of approximating the optimal strategy because it leverages temporal locality. The principle of temporal locality tells us that once data is requested, like once you ask for a variable, it's very likely that that same data will be requested again soon. Right? We don't often access a variable just once. After accessing it for the first time, it's usually not long before we access it again. Furthermore, the more recently a block or variable has been accessed, the more likely it is to be requested again soon. And it so happens that the converse of this statement is true. The more time that's passed since you've asked for a variable, the less likely it is that you will ask for it again. If I haven't requested a particular variable in a long time, the chances are I'm done using it. Therefore, it makes sense to replace the block that's gone the longest without being accessed. And this is precisely the definition of LRU. Now, like I said, LRU is not necessarily the best cache replacement policy for any given program, but it does well for most programs. There are some interesting and fancy algorithms that do slightly better than LRU by combining some of the policies we talked about on the previous slide, but we'll save those for the computer architecture course. Let's think about how many bits are needed to implement LRU for an eight-way set associative cache. And I'll give you a hint, it's not three. Most of you probably saw that right away, but if you didn't, let me point out that three bits is enough to identify a specific block, like maybe to say, this is the block you're gonna kick out next, but you need to store more data than that because if the next access happens to be to that block, then how do you know which block is next in line to get kicked out? So to implement the LRU algorithm, you need more than just the three bits to point at one block. You need to store the complete order in which the blocks were accessed. Now, to be clear, I don't mean we need to store the complete history of what was accessed. I just mean like in this case, if this is our order, we need to know that A was accessed more recently than D and D was accessed more recently than B and so on. So with that in mind, how many bits do we need to store this ordering of eight blocks? Well, let's see. The answer is not 24, because you don't have to list all eight blocks. If you list the first seven, you can infer what the eighth one is. But actually, the answer is also not 21. We can do it with 21 bits, like I just described, but there are techniques to use even fewer bits. To see that, think about this. How many different ways are there to line up eight blocks? Well, eight factorial. So if there are eight factorial possible ways to line up eight blocks, how many bits do you need to identify one of those specific orderings? Well, that would be the log of eight factorial, which is 16. So by being clever, you can actually implement LRU using only 16 bits per line. However, using a dense representation like this probably isn't the best strategy because to use it, you have to build a considerably larger and therefore slower circuit. So there is a trade-off between how many bits you store and how fast the algorithm can be. Now, if you were designing a CPU from scratch, you'd have a long discussion as to which was more important, 
less overhead or a faster cache. Probably end up being the faster cache in today's world, but that depends on who your target market is. Actually, CPUs today don't do either because neither trade-off is good enough. They need something that uses fewer bits and is faster. So they use an approximation called pseudo LRU. Remember, pseudo means false. This pseudo LRU algorithm doesn't always replace the block that's the least recently used, but it comes reasonably close while using much less hardware and a much simpler algorithm. So let's say we have one line of an eight way set associative cache. Now suppose we access this block. Pseudo LRU uses something that looks like a tournament bracket to identify the most recently used block. We begin by using one bit to tell us which half of the line contains this block. In this case, we point at the right half of the block. In the next round, we use another bit to tell us whether the block is in the third quarter or the fourth quarter. In this case, it points to the left, identifying the third quarter. And then finally, there's a third round that points right at the specific block. In some sense, we've created a marked path to the block that was most recently accessed. Now, when we need to evict a block, what we do is we move in the opposite direction of the arrows, thereby moving away from the block that was most recently accessed. Moving against the arrows doesn't necessarily lead us to the least recently used block, but the block it does lead us to tends to be old enough that the algorithm works well in practice. This is easier to see if we look at a complete example. So let's start with an empty line in an eight-way set associative cache. So let's say the first variable access that is placed on this line is A. So notice I've marked that block in the cache with an A, meaning this is variable A, and then the subscript one just tells us that that's the first access to this block. Also notice the arrows at all three levels are pointing at A because it's the most recently accessed. And then the next variable we access is B. And I have a subscript two next to B because that's the second access to the block and now the arrows point at B. And then we access variable C, that's our third access to the block. Now notice if you follow the arrows from the bottom, they point at C because it's the most recently accessed, and because the box between A and B isn't on the path to C, it's just left where it was. So now we access D and update the arrows, and then access E and update the arrows. Notice that bottom arrow is now pointing to the right half of the cache, which is where the most recent access is, and then we access F, G, and H. So now our cache line is full, all the boxes have arrows in them, and when we follow the arrows from the bottom, it points to the most recent access, which is variable H. The other boxes just retain whatever state they were last set to. So now let's say the next access is to variable C. Now this will be a cache hit because C is already in the block, so we need to update the boxes on the path to C, which will change these two. So when we make the update, you see the arrows changed, so the path from the bottom now points at C, and I changed the subscript on C from three to nine, so we can tell that that is the most recently accessed block. Now let's say our next access is to B. Again, we need to update the arrows on the path, which means this arrow will need to change. The other two arrows in the path are already pointing in the correct direction. So we'll update the arrow and update the subscript on B to indicate that that's the 10th access to that line in the cache. So now here's where we can see how the replacement works. What would happen if our next access is to a new variable I? What we do is we start at the bottom and we move against the arrows. So we know that the most recent access was to variable B on the left side of the cache. So we're gonna replace something on the right side of the cache. So as a result, we can't possibly kick out the most recently used block in the cache. So we move to the right and we come to this arrow. We're gonna move against this arrow, which means of the four blocks on the right side of the cache, we're gonna move away from the one which was the most recently accessed, which in this case was H. So we move to the left and look at this box. Again, this box tells us that F was accessed more recently than E, so we'll replace E. 
Now notice that E is not the least recently used of all of these blocks. That would be A. But it has been untouched for a while. There are at least three other blocks in this cache that have been touched more recently. And that's why this is an approximation of LRU. So when we complete this access, then I is now in place of E, and that is our 11th access to this block. All right, so let's do another one. Let's say we want to bring in a new variable J. Which block will get replaced? So again, we'll move against the arrows. So the most recently accessed block is on the right, so we'll move to the left. And then of the four blocks on the left, the most recently accessed, that would be B, is to the left, so we'll move to the right. And of those two blocks, C was more recently accessed, so we will evict D and replace D with J. This is such an attractive algorithm because it's very efficient in terms of bits that need to be stored and processing time. Because to implement this algorithm, we need only enough bits for this tree, which is n minus 1. In this case, where we have an 8-way cache, we only needed 7 bits. If we had a 15-way cache, we'd only need 15 bits. If we had a 32-way cache, we'd only need 31 bits, and so on. Plus, the algorithm only takes a logarithmic number of steps. And like I said, although you're not guaranteed to replace the least recently used block, the block that gets replaced tends to be old enough that the performance is very similar to the real LRU, close enough that it isn't worth the extra hardware needed to do a real LRU algorithm. So like I said earlier, a lot of caches just use pseudo LRU or some other simple direct replacement policy. But there's also been a lot of research done on very complicated cache replacement algorithms that combine some of the different ideas that we saw in that table of least recently used, least frequently used, random, and so on, to get a better hit rate. We could probably spend a couple of weeks talking about them, but we don't really have time in this course, so I save them for the computer architecture course.